Hey everyone, welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. All right, Peter, welcome to another AMA. How you doing? Doing well, man. The final, final seven episodes of Ozark dropped tonight. We're recording this on uh, April 29th. So interesting date for two reasons, by the way. The other thing that occurred to me this morning um, is that the days and dates in this year, 2022, were the same as they were in 1994. So I was like, oh my God, today is Friday, April 29th which is the same as it was in 94. So on Friday, April 29th in 1994 was the practice day at Imola. And that's when Rubens Barrichello had that horrible, horrible accident. Um, it, we can link to the accident where he basically hit the chicane and, and launched um, into a barrier and amazingly only escaped with a concussion and a broken nose. The following day, which is the same day as tomorrow will be, which was Saturday, April 30th was when Roland Ratzenberger was killed, which made it the first fatality in Formula One in 12 years, the last one being Gilles Villeneuve in 1982. And then, of course, Sunday, May 1st, which will be the same this year, was when Senna died. Uh, so All in 1994. Yeah, it was at the same race. I mean, you had these three horrible accidents resulting in two fatalities in one weekend. Um but again, just to think that it, it's the exact same days this year as it was um, th 28 years ago. Uh, just, I don't know why, I just sort of, I didn't, I never, I didn't, I didn't notice that until today. Well, it's kind of important information, right? Like your yeah. brain can only count so much. And what, I mean, this is really off topic, but do you still have the skill that you had back in the day where you can like remember what day, like day of the week a date was? Uh, only if I can peg it to something, but not not as profound as it used to be. Uh, I mean, it, it used to be. I remember in meetings, we used to just throw out random random dates and then we would fact check it. I feel like we wasted a lot of time doing that. Right, someone would tell me their birthday and I would tell them what day of the week they were born on. Yeah, love it, love it. Well, on the complete opposite end of that, um, what we're gonna talk about today is, is really a question that I mean, it's a topic that we get asked about a lot and we've gotten a lot of questions that have come in, but we've never really dove really deep into it, which is what we're going to do today. And it's kind of all things, bone health, bone mineral density, osteopenia, osteoporosis, kind of all things of that nature. And I know this is something that you work a lot with in your patients. And I know it's something that's of really big interest for people. And so our hope is that we can kind of go through this episode and focus on you know, why is this important? So why should people care about this? You know, people listening right now, there'll be a subsection of them that are going to be super interested. And there'll be probably another subsection who are maybe younger, they've never really thought about their bone health, and they might not think it really applies to them. But our hope is in the beginning, at least, we'll kind of walk through why they should care about this and why they should focus on it early on in life. And then from there, we'll talk about you know, how bone health changes as people age, the differences between sexism and men and women. And then we'll also focus on things on how people can improve or kind of help their bone health become better from physical activity to nutrition, supplements, drugs, and more. And then if all that goes well and we still have time, which is always 50-50 on how these AMAs go, we'll also focus a little bit on, you know, people dealing with acute injuries and how they need to think about this, which I know is something that you're interested in given your recent shoulder surgery and now you're kind of not as active in one side of your upper body as you used to be. So all that said, I think before we start going through those questions, it's gonna be helpful to set the stage a little bit just so everyone is on the same page and the definitions and what we're talking about. So maybe why don't we start with, you know, what are some of the types of bones we'll be referring to? Because at least for myself coming into this, I just kind of think a bone is a bone and I don't really think much more beyond that. So why don't you dive into that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it, bone is, uh, it's, a, it's a living tissue and, and, and okay, that's obvious, but I think it's also easy for a person to kind of forget that and think of bone as somewhat inert. But in fact, bone is heavily vascularized. 
Uh, bone is an organ that plays a very important role in a lot of things. I'm actually not going to go super deep into the anatomy and physiology of bones. Um, I'll point out just a couple things, right? So first of all, we kind of think of a couple types of sections of bone. So we think about the cortical or compact bone, and that's what forms like the shaft and the exterior of long bones. So if you think of your femur, your humerus, things like that, you know, they have kind of like the, the long shaft and then the nubbins at the end. So the shaft of that is the cortical or compact bone. And then at the end, you have the trabecular uh, bone, sometimes called the spongy bone. So those are, those are kind of at the end of the bone. And there are some differences amongst those in terms of their vascularization and things like that. Uh, but again, I think for the purpose of this discussion, just, you know, whenever I talk about compact or cortical bone, I'm talking about the shaft. And whenever I speak about the spongy or trabecular part, I'm talking about the end. Um, again, I think marrow, people probably intuitively understand that marrow is important, but again, it's very important, right? Marrow is what's producing our white cells and our red blood cells. So in this era where we were thinking about, you know, a post COVID world, you know, it's important to understand that the memory B cells and memory T cells that are going to provide lasting immunity against this virus and other viruses reside in the bone marrow. Um, and so the whole purpose of being infected and then having a subsequent infection that's less devastating purpose of being vaccinated for the same reason is to have memory B cells and T cells that are sitting there in the bone marrow that can respond immediately and quickly upon uh, reintroduction of, of the same antigen. You know, when you mentioned nubbins, it kind of made me think about your banana nubbins and you recently posted on Twitter you might be looking for a new profession. Do you want to let people know kind of what your new interest is in the term uh, in the world of longevity? Well, yeah, I mean, as you point out, I mean, I've, I've been very interested in human longevity for, uh, I guess probably about, you know, a little over 10 years. Um, and, and I'm sure I will remain so, but, but I, 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 I've at least considered moving into banana longevity because I think the opportunity uh, for impact is huge, right? I mean, it's one thing if you can figure out how to take the average person from being 80 to 90, um, and that, you know, that'll have a huge impact on the world. But if you could take the average banana and go from like two days before it turns mushy and brown to 10 days, I mean, I, I think it's revolutionary. And um, I just noticed I was on the USDA's most wanted list because of how many bananas I waste. So I got to do something about this. Yeah, I mean, if you solve the banana crisis and you move to avocados, they'll probably give you a Nobel Peace Prize as well. So, I mean, the upside is very high in this new world. You know, the thing is, I, I mean, avocados last so much longer. I mean, you just have a you just have a window of opportunity to like. I can actually buy avocado. I could buy like seven avocados and eat them in a week. I can't buy seven bananas and eat them in a week, like at one a day. It just doesn't work. So, I think I think that entire fruit space is just a racket. I think the whole banana infrastructure. I think, I think bananas are a pyramid scheme. Like, I think it's just the whole thing's just total scam. Yeah. Maybe one of our upcoming AMAs, will just do a conspiracies with Peter Atia and we'll just go into the world of bananas. So Peter, you mentioned, um, earlier ago, B cells and T cells. Can you kind of walk people through what cells make bones? Yeah. And again, this can be made as complicated or as simple as you want. I'm going to kind of just try to thread the needle a little bit and say, just think about osteoblasts and osteoclasts. And I kind of remember from medical school, the way I used to remember this. So osteoblasts B are responsible for building bone by producing collagen bone matrix and mineralizing it. Osteoclasts remove bone by reabsorbing calcified bone and the matrix. So Osteoblasts contribute to increasing bone mineral density, osteoclasts, the opposite. It's also important to understand this exists in an equilibrium, right? So we're constantly remodeling bone. Um, so we're, we're sort of adding to and subtracting from this and, and basically turning over calcium. So bone is like 50 to 70% mineral. And obviously what's the predominant mineral? It's calcium. We'll talk about that in a second. It's about 20 to 40% organic matrix, right? So again, what does organic mean? Organic is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, et cetera. And then the rest of it is, is a bit of water and lipid. And again, you'll see that primarily in the, in the marrow. So in an adult, like the entire human skeletal system can be remodeled in a really long cycle, 
right? It might take 10 years to turn over all of the mineral and organic content within the bone over and over again. But at the micro level, calcium balance is, you know, ha happening quite frequently. Um, I don't remember the exact number. I want to say it's like 99%, but virtually all of the body's calcium is contained within bone. Um, and therefore bone plays a very important role in calcium homeostasis. And if anybody's taken a physiology class, they probably remember how important calcium signaling is to everything within a cell. So again, we think of these bones as structural entities, which of course, first and foremost, they are. But remember, they're also a very important reservoir for calcium, which is another very important ion in, um, in the activity of every cell. And you talked a lot about calcium. What about vitamin D? What role does vitamin D play in the bones? So they're both very important. Um, and again, there's, there's sort of two forms of vitamin D, vitamin D2 and D3. But really, when I talk about vitamin D, I'm going to mostly talk about D3, which is the active form. So D, so what's the problem with being deficient in vitamin D? Well, again, people might recall a disease called rickets. And you see this often in developing parts of the world where people are really malnourished and they have really, really soft sort of spongy bones. And it's, it's, it's actually just yesterday I had a friend over who, uh, does a bunch of mission work in, um, Rwanda. And she was showing me a child at their, uh, camp whose legs, you know, the child was like probably five years old. He was sitting down and they were doing something with his legs that you would think would be impossible to do with a human being. Basically, while he was sitting on the ground, they were able to move his foot back and forth, back and forth, and he was in no pain, but it's because he didn't have bones that were anything other than basically rubber bands. So he couldn't stand. And within, I want to say six months of correcting his nutrition, totally normal. So, um, you know, amazing opportunity when you think about what's, what happens in that part of the world, uh, and how you can fix that. But what is it about vitamin D? Well, vitamin D increases the gut's absorption of calcium. So if you're woefully deficient in vitamin D, you're going to have trouble absorbing calcium through the gut. And we're going to talk in this podcast later about the importance of dietary calcium and or supplementary calcium. And so you can see why that becomes um, part of the issue. Yeah. So the, the other thing to kind of keep in mind here is the role of another hormone. And again, I'm trying to only introduce concepts now that are going to become relevant later, either through treatments or nutrition or supplementation. So I'm, you know, being a little bit uh, simplistic, but the other thing that you can't avoid here is understanding the role of calcium and parathyroid hormone. So I think most people are probably familiar with their thyroid gland it sits here in the neck. Um, it's kind of got this shape to it that where it's got like kind of two main lobes and then each lobe has two poles. Well, at each of those poles is a little tiny gland called the parathyroid gland. So you have four of those. And the parathyroid gland is really the master gland for regulating calcium levels. So low levels of calcium in the blood stimulate parathyroid hormone secretion. As parathyroid hormone level goes up, it stimulates the release of calcium from the bone into the blood. Now it also induces enzymes in the kidney, which then convert vitamin D into its active form to then aid and speed up in the process of reabsorbing more calcium from the diet. So all of this stuff, parathyroid hormone, calcium, vitamin D, very important to maintaining bone health. And anytime you have things that disrupt that system, you're going to see disruptions potentially in the bones. Yeah, and I think that was a good and kind of quick overview of what will be important for what we cover next. And I think the natural follow-up to it is, you know, what is the consequence of poor bone health? What is the consequence of low bone density? I think, you know, some people are who will be listening to this will have already known issues of bone density, and some people have never thought about this before in their life. And so, you know, what would you say to those people on why they should care about this and why they should think about it? Thank you for listening to today's sneak peek AMA episode of The Drive. If you're interested in hearing the complete version of this AMA, you'll want to become a member. We created the membership program to bring you more in-depth exclusive content without relying on paid ads. Membership benefits are many, and beyond the complete episodes of the AMA each month, they include the following. 
ridiculously comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, and thing we discuss on each episode of The Drive. Access to our private podcast feed. The Qualies, which are a super short podcast, typically less than five minutes, released every Tuesday through Friday, which highlight the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is particularly important for those of you who haven't heard all of the back episodes. It becomes a great way to go back and filter and decide which ones you want to listen to in detail. Really steep discount codes for products I use and believe in, but for which I don't get paid to endorse and benefits that we continue to add over time. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, if you're already a member, but you're hearing this, it means you haven't downloaded our member-only podcast feed where you can get the full access to the AMA and you don't have to listen to this. You can download that at peteratiamd.com forward slash members. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. Mm-hmm.